Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Lippman, Senior Pastor of the New Mountaintop Church and host of the Midweek Refill. As always, I am so delighted to have the opportunity to share God's Word with you. Please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit that thumbs up if you're watching us on Facebook or any other platform. We ask you to do this because it helps us to get spread out in the very crowded algorithms of social media. Well, we have embarked on a four-part series as of last week that is entitled Trusting God with Your Entire Life. This week, I want to move you into part two as we talk about finding peace in God's providence. You know, trusting God with our entire life really does involve finding peace in the providence of God. That word providence is a very interesting term. It is a really significant term in terms of thinking about faith and how we as believers should live a life that completely relies upon God. But what does providence mean in light of this context? Well, friends, providence refers to God's guidance and God's care in our everyday aspects of our lives. Providence is watching for the hand of God and living in expectation of God's guidance, God's care, and God's provision in every aspect of our everyday lives. Do you know that God actually is concerned about every aspect of your everyday life? Yes, God plans our lives. God spends time calculating every test, every storm, every debacle, and every delight and every deliverance that will happen in our lives. That is the providence of God. You know, the root word of the word providence is provide. And even when you go a little farther and break down that word provide, it literally means to see ahead. Pro, P-R-O, is a prefix that means to come before. And the word visio has to do with vision. So provision means to go ahead and see before. It's the idea of anticipating what will be needed in order to conquer in a conquest. That's exactly what the providence of God is. Before you and I can go to sleep tonight and hopefully wake up in the morning, God has already gone ahead of us into our future. He has already seen what needs to be provided. He has already got vision in place to take care of the cares of tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and the week after next week and month after next month. I think you get the picture year after year. You know, maybe that's why the scripture talks about how every morning comes with its set of new mercies. That, my friends, is the providence of God. And you and I can trust God with every area of our lives when we understand the necessity of finding peace in God's providence. Again, that means finding joy, contentment, satisfaction, living with hope, living with exuberance, living with enthusiasm every single day simply because we know our Heavenly Father has already gone ahead of us. He's already pro, gone ahead, and visio, seen what is there. And consequently, he will provide whatever it is that we are in need of before we ever get there. Man, I'm telling you, that just excites me to be reminded that we have a Father who cares so much about us and loves us so much that he wants us to find peace in the reality of his providence. Is that powerful or what? Well, listen, when we recognize, in fact, that God is in control of our lives and every facet of our lives, 
we can experience his perfect plan for us, which can in turn cause us to find a peace that surpasses all understanding, even in the midst of difficult and uncertain circumstances. We can live with an absolute surety that everything is going to work out because God has already gone ahead of us, seen what's ahead, and made the necessities available. Don't you just love God for doing that and just being the God that he is? So in this second part of our series, we're going to delve into trusting in God's providence and how it can lead us to live a life of contentment and hope every single day. So by now, I hope you have your Bible. If not, grab that favorite app, get your notepad, and don't forget that you can simply check the description below to find a link to the free PDF handout that goes along with this teaching. And you'll be able to delve a bit deeper on a personal level because in it I include personal discovery questions where you can really begin to probe your heart and your mind toward the teaching and the things of God to really live in peace because of God's providence. All right, so let's dive into our main text for this week which is one of my favorite, and I'm sure one of yours, Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse number 11. And it reads like this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Can I read that again? It just blesses me every time I hear that passage. For I know the plans I have for you. And please notice, notice who said it. Declares the Lord. Capital L-O-R-D. Elohim himself. The Most High God. The Omnipotent One says, I know the plans that I have for you. Now, listen, this is such a powerful verse of scripture because it reminds us that we are not some accidental, incidental side thought, but we are actually on the heart and mind of the one who created us. You know, I don't know what your circumstances may be in terms of your birth. Maybe you were not born into what you would consider to be ideal circumstances. Um, a lot of people were born under situations, circumstances that they don't even really want to discuss. There are many people who may not even know who your father is or who perhaps even your mother is. Maybe you were adopted as a baby, as a child. And I know that sometimes that can leave you feeling a little disenfranchised, disconnected with the rest of the world, so to speak. But this verse gives us such immense hope and peace and contentment because we're reminded of the peace that comes from God's providence. For God himself, the one who created the heavens and the earth and the stars and the skies and the sun and the moon and the water and the animals and the flowers and the vegetation and the trees, the oceans, everything that is, including us, he says, you're on my mind. Wow. <laughs> and he spoke these words way before we were ever even on this planet. I mean, this is from the book of Jeremiah. So we're talking about way even before Jesus descended from heaven and took on the form of human flesh as a baby born in Nazareth. God says, I know the plans I have for you. And how exciting that is to know that even when we don't know what to do, which is most of the time, if not all of the time, God says, no worries, don't stress, don't fret, child. I know what I have planned for you. And what's so incredibly powerful about that is that word, I. For I know, he says, the plans I have for you. And I, in English, is a personal pronoun. It is singular, 
which means it's not, it doesn't say we know the plans we have for you or they know the plans. It doesn't even say they know the plans I have for you. It doesn't say we know the plans I have for you. It says I know the plans I have for you. And the reason why I wanted to emphasize that is because sometimes we can get so caught up in dangerous doctrines and theology and in fear rather than faith that we begin to think that the devil has access to our future. And according to Jeremiah 29, 11, the devil's nowhere in this scene. Satan is nowhere in this picture here. God says, you have no need to live in fear of the evil one thwarting the plans that are in existence for your life because he doesn't even know. <laughs> God says, this is a personal singular pronoun here. God says, I know the plans I have for you. So this notion that Satan has peeked into your future and he sees what's coming down the road and, and he's trying to block it. He cannot see into God's plans for your life. No, God says, I know. So stop living in fear. Stop living in hysteria. Stop living spiritually spooky because you're so worried about something or someone derailing God's plan. Do you know God does not give anyone or share authority over your life with anyone like that to enable them to be able to derail his plan for you. Now you can delay God's plan for you by living in those disobedience. Ask Jonah, he'll tell you that. But no one can derail God's plan for your life. So God says, I know and only I know the plans I have for you. And then to ensure that we know who the sender of this message is, is, he adds his own signature, declares the Lord. And notice the kind of plans God has for you. We're talking about finding peace in God's providence. The kind of plans God has for you are not doom and gloom and disaster. Instead, they're plans of welfare, this translation says, meaning faring well, doing well, being well, and not plans for evil. You know, I'll go back to what I mentioned earlier about how many of us do suffer from what's called a fatherhood fracture, and that is to say we see God through the lens of how we may have been treated by our father. So therefore, if our father treated us well, for many of us, we see God as a father who will treat us well. If our father on the, on the other hand, treated us badly, we think of God in terms of being this mean, vindictive, judgmental, critical God who is just out to get you, you know, just uh, making a list and checking it twice. God says, I do not have evil thoughts towards you. I do not have evil plans towards you. No, quite to the contrary, my plans for you are plans to take you to a place of blessings and peace and favor. And that's what that word welfare means in this particular translation. Not for evil, but watch this church, to give you a future and to give you a hope. God's plan for you, God's providence for you, God has already gone ahead of you, that's pro. God has already seen ahead of you, that's visio. God has already made the necessities readily available for you based on what he's looked ahead, planned out your script of your life. And God says, there's a future and there is a hope that I have for you. Now that's beautiful. That's wonderful. That's powerful. That's amazing because we are reminded that nothing and no one but us can delay God's plans for our lives. So I want you to think about this, that this week. And as you work through your personal discovery guide, uh, the discussion guide that goes along with this teaching, which you can access in the description below, I want you to think on this passage this week and ask yourself a number of questions that you will find on the PDF handout. You know, trusting God is a necessity with every area of your life and especially 
understanding that before we were here, God was already here. God already went through all of our future. God already knows how many days we have left, how many years, how many trials, how many triumphs, how many tragedies. God already knows all of that. And that's why we have to trust in the providence of God. You know, it is very difficult for some people to actually accept the fact that God has a plan for their lives. For many people, again, like I've mentioned a few times already, their, their problem exists in the fact that their parents may not have had a plan for their lives. Maybe your birth was an unplanned pregnancy. Or maybe your arrival was an unhappy moment for someone. And so seeing God through the lens of our parents can make it very difficult to see God as a loving father, which is why many people do struggle with accepting the fact that God has a plan for their lives. Another reason why a lot of people struggle with accepting the fact that God has a plan for their lives is because they don't have a plan for their lives. And so those who, as I, many years ago when I was young, uh, used to kind of live pillar to post, week to week, day by day, hand to hand, and breath to breath. And so it's hard to think about an everlasting, eternal God who thinks far in advance when you think minute to minute. Yet God is a God who can be trusted not only with your entire life, but for your entire life. And so recognizing God's providence can definitely bring comfort and peace in your life in challenging times. You know, I recently few months ago now went through uh, a major uh, ordeal health wise and I wasn't sure what the outcome was was going to be and I remember being hospitalized for the very first time in 52 years of living it was terrifying I didn't know what to expect I didn't know you know if I was going to walk up out of there or if I was going to be somehow uh, in a debilitated state for life I just didn't know and I got to the point where I got so depressed one day that I was just crying, laying in the hospital bed, hoping no one would walk in so I could get that, you know, that ugly cry. You know what I'm talking about? That ugly cry is where your face is all, woo, you know. And about the time that I was kicking into third gear, you know, that's when it gets real ugly, you know, and, and <laughs> your face is all messed up. In walks my wife. And I'm like, oh my God, I wanted to get this out before. She said, what's wrong? I said, I'm just so depressed. I'm, I just I just don't know if I'm going to make it. I just don't know. You know, it was just, I was just sobbing. And so in the way that only my wife can, and only any good wife can for her husband, she comforted me in a matter of moments and said to me, God has you in his hands and Everything is going to be okay. And here I sit, three months later, living literally my best life up to this point. Health-wise, physically, my strength has been regained. Not 100% of it, but a good, a good 75, somewhere in there. But I'm back to being able to minister the way that I like to and just giving my all and just just d depositing into people and uh, dumping all of myself on the stage, as it were. And I'm here to tell you that recognizing that God goes ahead of us and before us, he looks at the situation and he supplies the necessities that we're going to need before we ever know that we're going to need them. It helped me to be able to find comfort and peace while I was in recovery. And the same way that God brought me through that, God can bring you through whatever challenges that you're facing in your life. You know, that was just a personal story I wanted to encourage you with and just to let you know that I'm not talking about what mama said or daddy told me. But I'm telling you what I know personally, that you can find peace just in the gentle recognition and reminder 
that God has gone ahead of you and he sees that storm, that sickness, that struggle, uh, that stain, whatever it may be, he sees it before you get, get to it. He takes into account everything you're going to need to get through it. And he makes all those necessities available before you ever get there. <laughs> but I know, and only I know, the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I love God for that. So I want to leave you with another biblical example. One of my favorite passages or stories, rather, narratives in the Bible is the story of Joseph. And you find Joseph in almost 13, 14 chapters, the last chapters of the book of Genesis. Genesis 37 starts with Joseph. And the last chapter in Genesis, which is Genesis chapter 50, ends with Joseph. It's, it's a long story over 13, 14 chapters and maybe 20 years or so of a span of life. You know, Joseph was a dreamer. God had given him a dream. God had shown him that one day his family and many others were going to bow down to him because God was going to elevate him. And his father gave him a coat of many colors. It was loud. It was gaudy. It had uh, many textures to it. And, and I like to theorize that this coat from his father represented the multifaceted future that lay, lay ahead for Joseph. His brothers got jealous because of the love that the father bestowed upon him and because of the coat that his dad gave him. And so, long story short, they take him through all of this treachery and turmoil to get rid of him. But every time he goes down, he pops back up. And they put him down in a cistern, hoping he would drown in water, this pit in the ground. And then he comes back up and he gets transportation into Egypt because he's sold as a slave by his brothers, the same one that put him in the pit. And it would be in Egypt where God would have his blessing for him. He goes down into prison. He comes up into Potiphar's house and becomes the head of the slaves there in, 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 in his house. He goes into prison and uh, all of that. And finally, in Genesis chapter 50, he has become the prime minister of Egypt. He is the one to whom all people must come and bow in order to get food. So his dream and vision in chapter 37 of Genesis, he sees now in fruition of chapter, chapter 50 of Genesis. And here's what I'm trying to tell you. Before Genesis 1 was ever created, before the story of Genesis 1 was ever created, before the creation was created, before the earth was created, God saw Joseph in Genesis 50 before God ever orchestrated Genesis chapter 1. And Genesis 50 verse 20 says, Joseph says there, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for my good. So that's the way to look at the trials and the tragedies and the tests that you go through in your life. God saw it before Genesis 1 was ever even needed to be recorded. And you might have to wait 50 chapters, but believe me when I tell you, Whatever God has planned for you, you can rest in peace in that on this side, not in heaven. But you can live every day in peace knowing that God's providence can bring me the peace I need to go through every chapter of my life. And I just love the word of God. I love spending this time with you. I'm so thankful for you tuning in. Hey, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to check the links in the description below to get the handout that goes along with this teaching. I love you. Share this with somebody. And until next week, part three, hey, this is Bishop Littman with the Midweek Refill, New Mountaintop Church. Join us here Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. If you're in the metropolitan Atlanta area, join us in person. Sunday mornings, 9.30 a.m. We love y'all, and until next week, you go with God.